Good morning. morning. We'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in four verses of our hymn today, 783. portion of scripture we would like to meditate on this day is from the gospel according to St. John chapter 15. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is God's word. In Jesus' name, my dear brothers and sisters, 
kindness, goodness, encouragement, self-control. What a wonderful list of spiritual fruits you've been able to focus on this week. And I'd like today to add one more to that list. The fruit of... Wait for it. Oh, it's not there. Patience. Patience is what we're going to speak about today. There are very many different degrees of patience. There are those people who are very patient, and when I think of someone who's very patient, I think of a, a preschool teacher who deals with three and four-year-olds from three to four, maybe even longer hours a day, five days a week. That, to me, takes a lot of patience. And then there are those who are kind of in the middle of the road. The, the type of people who may not mind at all standing in line to get in on a roller coaster, but yet get very upset when they have to stand in the line at a store. And then there's these type of people. People who have no patience whatsoever. I have to admit, sometimes in my life, that's the type of person that I am. No matter where you fall on this scale, I think that each and every one of us knows that at times in our lives, we could use more of the fruit of patience. In our lesson today, we have a picture of God's patience. He, Jesus pictures a vineyard, and, and grapes, raising grapes, was very common in the culture of the Jewish people. And so Jesus, throughout script, the Gospels, uses a picture of grape vines and grape fruit. Growing grapes takes a lot of patience. You have to start the vines, you have to take care of the vines, you have to make sure that disease doesn't get on the fruit, you have to prune them. I once read that if you plant a new grape vine, it can take up to three years to produce fruit. That takes a lot of patience. Now compare that with God's patience in your life. God created you. God brought you to faith and he connected you with his son, Jesus Christ. You have a relationship with Jesus now. And the Holy Spirit, as the vines bring the nutrients to the, or to the branches of the, of the grapevine, the Holy Spirit comes to you in word and sacrament, and he nourishes you so that you can get stronger, so that you can be more fruitful. And God the Father, Jesus said, is the one who prunes you. In the original language, the word for pruning and cleaning is the same word. God cleans you, he prunes you, he, he cuts you when he comes to you in his law and shows you that you have sinned against his will. And he cleans you with that message of the gospel of the full and free forgiveness that Jesus has won for each and every one of you. God prunes you maybe by sending challenges into your life. Challenges that he uses to bring you closer to him, to strengthen your faith in him. Every day of your life from birth until you die, God is there tending you, 
patiently pruning you so that you can be with him one day forever in heaven. So why are we so impatient? Well, I looked up two lists of the antonym of patience. You know antonym, right? A word that means opposite of the word you're looking at. And on one list there were 86 different words. And on the other one there was 82 different words. And out of all those words, I never saw the word selfish. And isn't that really at the core of our impatience or our lack of patience? My time is being wasted. My abilities are being wasted. My convenience is being wasted. My, my, my. Jesus gives you the secret, though. Four times in this lesson, Jesus uses the phrase, remain in me. That means it's important. You were brought into Jesus at your baptism or when someone spoke God's word to you and the Holy Spirit created that faith in you. You were connected to him. You're in him. He's the one who has cut away your sin and put it on him, himself and go, went to the cross to forgive those sins. He's the one who has dressed you in his robes of righteousness so that now you're a good branch. Remaining in Jesus is a key to being patient. He is always there for you, patiently helping you produce that fruit. There's some things I'd like you to think about when it comes to patience. First of all, when you marvel at the patience that God has for you throughout your whole life, pray. Pray that God enables you to be more patient with him. Sometimes it's easy to become impatient with God. When you have achievements you want to accomplish and you pray to him and they don't seem to be happening. When challenges come your way but trusting in God Trusting in God requires trust. Trusting that he knows what's best for you. Second thing I'd like you to think about is be patient with the people around you. Again, it's easy to become impatient with your teachers, your students, your, your parents, your brothers and sisters, the, everyone around you and that's because they're sinners just like you. But impatience hurts a relationship. Patience builds a relationship. And finally, be patient with yourself. God has made you exactly how he wants you to be. He's given you the abilities that he wants you to have. And he knows the fruits that he wants to produce through you. And so be patient with yourself. Keep going back to the word. Keep remaining in Jesus. And God will produce the fruits that he would have you do. I'd like to close with this final verse of our reading. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Amen. We join together in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, 
You who see all our flaws, help us to see the patience you have with us as you continue to forgive our sins and as you continue to give us undeserved blessings. May the love you have shown us in your Son, Jesus, move us to continually show love and patience to all those you have placed in our lives, to your glory. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you by his Spirit, that Christ, dwelling in your hearts by faith, may fill you with all spiritual blessings. Amen. Another battle.